Hey guys, um, this is going to be a video going over how to solve word problems with matrices. It's the exact same thing as what you just did with solving equations with matrices. The only uh, difference is we're going to give you a word problem and you have to create the equations first and then solve um, using your matrix. So if you want to, real quick, I'm going to show you the answers to what you should have gotten on the assignment you just did. Remember when you turn it in that all your work is being shown, but here you can check and make sure that you did do the homework right when you were just solving. If any of these are not correct, you might want to go back and fix it before you continue on with this video. Um, but it is essentially the same thing, or just adding a word problem to it to make you create the equations first. All right, so go ahead and pause and check your work with these. And when you're ready, um, come back. So pause. Right. So we're going to move on to word problems with matrices. Um, there are three simple steps when we go to solve these. The very first step is going to be to write the system of linear equations and define our variables. So if I have an x and a y, what does that represent? Because when I solve, I'm going to get x equals something, y equals something. What was it? Was it apples? Was it tickets? Was it, you know, what? who knows? Uh, was it cost of something? Um, so make sure you do that, and then st step two is going to be to rewrite those equations as a matrix equation, and which we did in the last notes. And then step three, we're going to use A inverse times V to solve for the variable matrix. Okay, so again, this is all the same thing, except now we're presenting you with a step one of creating the equations first. Okay. What I am going to do is I'm going to do one of these examples, maybe two. I think I'm going to do two equations. I'll do two examples. I'm going to do one and two, and then you're going to be responsible for finishing the notes. So your homework, technically, is completing the notes, doing a three, four, and five. Okay? Just so it matches. Where is it? I know I changed this name. There we go. Changed it to Mike. All right, so let's do this. My first example, Corey, he bought some neon fish at $2 each and some angel fish at $3 each for his new aquarium. Corey bought a total of 20 fish and spent $45. How many of each fish did he buy? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to write the system of linear equations and we have to define our variables. So, let's see here. We have uh, two different situations. We have money for fish and we have how many fish we have in all. So, I'm going to define my variables first. I'm going to have x equal neon fish can't spell. And I'm going to have y equal the angel fish. Okay, so using that, I'm going to create my equations. So my equations, I'm going to do the money one first. So $2 for each neon fish, that's going to be 2x. And then angel fish were $3 each, so I'm going to add 3y. And I spent a total of $45. Okay, so everything that was money related got put together. All right, so $2 for neon, $3 for angel, and then a total of $45. They're all talking about money. All right, my next equation is going to come from the total amount of fish he got. He has a total of 20 fish. Okay, so how can we write an equation? That represents just the total amount of fish. Okay. Well, we have neon fish, right, which is X, and we have angel fish, which is fish, which is Y, and that's going to equal a total of 20 fish. Okay. So my X plus my Y equals 20. Right. So that is my system of linear equations. And there is my variables. From here, I'm going to rewrite these to be a system of a matrix equation. Remember what we did last time. We're going to have 
um, a matrix for our coefficients. We're going to have a matrix for my variables. And then we're going to have an equals matrix, which represents the totals. Okay. So for this one, my coefficients. All right, my coefficients in my top equation are 2 and 3. I also want to make sure my x's and y's are in the same order, and they are. So we have a coefficient of 2, a coefficient of 3. Then my bottom equation, these have a coefficient of 1 in each of those, technically. Okay, so there's my coefficient matrix. My variable matrix, we are using x's and y's. And then our equals matrix, we're equal to the constants of 45 and 20. Okay, so I've written my linear functions into a matrix equation. Now we have to find the inverse of matrix A and multiply it with B. Okay, so which one is which? Well, remember, this is matrix A. This is the variable matrix. We don't know it and it is equal to matrix B, okay? So we always set it up, AX equals B. So matrix A is 2, 3, 1, 1. We have to find the inverse of that first, okay? Remember, for inverses, we do 1 over the determinant, and then we multiply it by, like, that scrambled up matrix, okay? The scrambled matrix is where my 2 and 1 switch plots, and my 3 and 1 change their sign. The determinant for this matrix is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 3 times 1, which is 3, right? Remember, determinant is going to be 2 times 1 minus 3 times 1, so we are going to get negative 1 for our determinant. All right, so my scalar is now 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1, which results into negative 1 positive 3, positive 1, and negative 2. Okay, this is now my inverse matrix. Sorry. Okay, so we take our inverse matrix and we're going to multiply it with matrix B. And matrix B is my constant, which is 45 and 20. All right, we're going to multiply these together. So remember, we take my first row and multiply it with my column. So that means I'm going to have one, negative 1 times 45, which is negative 45, and then add it with 3 times 20, which is 60. Do it again for the bottom. 1 times 45 is 45, and then negative 2 times 20 is negative 40. This simplifies. Remember, this is going to equal x. So now I have my variable matrix is going to be that is 15, and that is 5. Okay. So since my variable matrix, which was x, y, we now know is equal to 15 and 5. My word problems get my word answers. It wanted to know how many of each fish, right? So I can answer. Since x equals 15, I know that there, there is 15 neon fish. And since y is now 5, then there are 5 angel fish in the new aquarium. Okay, make sure your word problems always get word answers. Okay, so this is the matrix solution, but we have to make sure we put it in a sentence form. Okay? All right, let's do one more, and then the rest is up to you. So one more together. We have Mike's Taco Hut sells tacos and burritos. Yesterday they sold a total of 716 food items. The number of tacos they sold was 10 less than two times the number of burritos, okay? What is the amount of each food item that was sold? All right. Here we go. So let's look at what we have here. 
what do we know? I know that we sold a total of 716 food items. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write that equation. Okay. Um, I'm going to use X for tacos, and I'm going to use Y for burritos. So my first equation, a total of 716 items, so that means my, all my tacos, which is X, plus all my burritos, which is Y, is going to equal the 716 items. Okay. The second equation is going to be, they've kind of given us a puzzle to find out how many tacos were sold. So if I look here, a little red. All right, the number of tacos, so number of tacos was, so I'm going to have X equals. They're kind of giving me an equation for X, aren't they? So tacos is going to equal 10 less than 2 times the number of burritos. So 2 times the number of burritos minus 10. Okay. Those are my two equations. But when we go to solve it, my order is not correct. So I have to do one tiny modification to it. Okay. So the system we're actually going to use... So x plus y equals 716, that's fine. But notice how the bottom equation, my x's and y's are not lined up where the equal sign is, okay? So my second equation, I'm actually going to subtract 2y over. So it's going to be x minus 2y equals, uh, that's going to stay negative 10, okay? We have to write them where our x's and y's are stacked on, stacked on top of each other, okay? Because now from here, I'm going to be able to create my matrix equation. Okay, so we got to use this. This is my answer. All right, that is the system of equations that we have to use. So when we go to write our matrix equation, here we go. Let's do our coefficient matrix first. Oh, there we go. Our coefficients matrix first. So the coefficients in my top equation are 1 and 1. My bottom equation are 1 and negative 2. The variable matrix, I chose to use the variables X and Y. If you wanted to use T and V for tacos and burritos, have at it. Nothing wrong with it. Um, and then equal my constants, which in this case are 716 and negative 10. Okay? So remind ourselves, this is my A matrix. This is my variable matrix, and this is matrix B. Now we're going to move on to solve. So we're going to find our inverse of matrix A and then multiply it with matrix B. And for this equation, or this example, I'm also going to show you how to do it in your calculator afterwards. So a little bonus for you guys. Okay, let's do A inverse first. So we know we're going to have 1 over our determinant. Multiply that with our... Switch around matrix, so 1 and negative 2 have to change spots. And then my other diagonal, they change their signs, so that becomes negative 1, negative 1. My determinant is going to come from 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. Subtract from that 1 times 1, which is 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is going to give me negative 3. Okay? So, multiply this through. Negative one-third times negative two is actually positive two-thirds. Negative one-third times negative one is positive one-third. Negative one-third times negative one will become positive one-third. And then negative one-third um, times one is negative one-third. All right, this is our inverse matrix. Now we are going to multiply it with our matrix B, which is our constant matrix, which was 716 and negative 10. Okay. Solving this will give us our, our uh, the answers to our variable matrix. Alright, so 
First row, multiply with first column. So 2 thirds times 716. That's the same thing as doing 716 times 2 divided by 3. It looks like it is 477.3. Does that make sense, does it? Because we should have a nice whole number. I'm, just trying, I'm looking over to make sure we didn't mess up. Because we should get whole numbers. We're talking about the amount of burritos and stuff. So let me see. Let me make sure. Total amount was 716, right? Yep. Tacos equals X equals 10 less than 2 times burritos. All right, so 10 less than 2 times Y. It goes on the end because we're subtracting from the 2 times Y. I subtracted 2Y over to be with the X, which equals negative 10. Okay. 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 7, 16, negative 10. Make sure my determinant was correct. Negative 2 minus 1 gives me negative 3. Okay. I switched those. I changed their signs. Let me see what's going on. All right. I figured out what the problem was. The problem was I didn't keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. So 2 thirds of 716 is 477.3. We're okay. I was second guessing myself. Then I'm going to add to that, right, one third of negative 10. So that's taking negative 10 times 1 divided by 3, which gives me negative 3.3. See that? Should have just kept going. 477.3 minus 3.3 .3 gives me the whole number of 474. So I did not do anything wrong. All right. This is my variable matrix. Um, do it again. So we have 1 third times 716. The same thing as taking 716 and divide it by 3. So that is 58.6. And then I'm going to do negative 1 third times negative 10. So that's negative 10 divided by negative 3, which is going to be negative, or sorry, positive 3.3, .3, repeating. That's and when I add those together, we end up with 200. Nope. 716. Oh, I did the wrong number. 716 divided by 3. Here we go. 238. 238. There we go. Add those together. And we get 242. All right, word problems, get word answers. We know my variable matrix of X, Y, or if you use T and B for tacos and burritos, gives us 474 and 242. Again, what does that mean? Okay, that means that um, Mike sold 474... Tacos and 242 burritos. Um, what's nice about these problems, by the way, is that you can always plug things in and make sure that they work. Okay? It told me they sold a total of 716, right? So if I add together 474 plus 242, I should get 716. Okay? Which I do. So we did do the problem right. <clears throat> even though I thought I messed up in the middle. So here is our answer, okay? 
So um, your homework is to finish the rest of the notes. I am about to show how to do this problem on my calculator. So if you have a graphing calculator, get it out. If you don't have a graphing calculator, then you can go ahead and stop the video and work on the remaining three problems from uh, these notes. Okay? But if you're still with me, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator. The first thing you have to do, you have to write your equation, okay? And you have to get your matrix equation, okay? Once you have your step B, your matrix equation, okay? What you're going to do is there's a matrix button, okay? It is right here, okay? You're going to push second matrix. That's going to take you to the matrix menu. It looks like this. Okay. You have to put in the matrix that you're using first. So you're going to go over to edit and then you're going to push enter and you're going to put in the matrix. So my first matrix was matrix A. The dimensions of that is a two by two. So I'm going to push two, enter, two. Notice how it created a two by two matrix for me. Now we're going to type in our numbers. So I'm going to do 1, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter, and then negative 2, enter. And see, I have my complete second matrix A. All right, to do another one, I have to go back to the matrix menu. So second matrix. To go back to my matrix menu, we're going to go back over to edit. Now I want matrix B, so I have to go down to edit a new matrix, which is matrix B, and click enter there. This matrix is my constant matrix, which is a two by one. So I have to tell it, two, enter, one, enter. It gives me a two by two. Put in my constants, which are 716, and negative 10. Make sure you use the negative button Okay, not the minus button. If you use minus, it'll give you an error message. You have to use the negative button. All right, so now you have your two matrices Then You're going to quit. So second, quit, leave that. Okay, so you have a blank screen right now. Go back into your matrix menu. So second, matrix. Now you're going to select matrix A. Okay, you're going to push enter. Enter matrix A. You want the inverse of that, right? Right here, see how there's a little negative one? That's your inverse button. So type that and look at that. You have A inverse and multiply. So I'm going to put in another matrix. So second matrix, go down to matrix B. Click on that. Look at that. A inverse B and then just click enter. Look at that. 474 and 242, okay? So that's a way you can do it with your calculator. The piece you have to absolutely show me by hand is step A and B. If you have one of these, then you're allowed to do step C through this, okay? If you don't have a graphing calculator, you have to show me those steps about where it came from, how you did it by hand. All right, so I hope that was a nice little trick for you guys. Um, and you can make use of it. Do the rest of the notes, turn them in, and I'll see you next time.